Algebra 2 7.5b Rational Exponents as Radical Expressions. So if you haven't seen the previous videos and I don't want you to become lost or confused, just click on this description and you can see their links. And the product rule of exponents tells us to add exponents when multiplying their bases. So exponents can be rational numbers. And if we have a to the half power, see how it's got a little exponent of a half? If we multiply it by another one, we're going to add these two exponents, aren't we? And a half and a half makes a whole. So we have a 1. So we don't have to write that 1, do we? We can just write it as an a. Well, it also means if we square this, that it's going to be an a. And if we square it and it's an a, that means the square root of a would equal a to the half power. See? And it also means that we could take a cube of a, the cube root of a, and make it as a to the one-third power. Same thing for the fourth root of a. It would be a to the one-fourth. So that's what we're going to talk about in this video, how we can have little fractions as exponents. So here's a definition for any non-negative number a and any rational number index k. Remember, that's the index. a to the 1 kth power is going to equal the kth root of a, the non-negative kth root of a. And when working with rational exponents, we assume that variables in the base are non-negative. We can write rational expressions without the rational exponents. So if we have x to the half power, we can say it's the square root of x. If we have 27 to a one-third power, it's the cube root of 27. See? 3 cubed, 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27. We can remove this exponent and the root and the radical sign and just have a 3 there. If we have abc, to the one-fifth power, that means we've got the fifth root of ABC. And we can reverse this and rewrite radical expressions with rational exponents. So if we've got the fifth root of 7XY, we can write it like this and say it's to the one-fifth power. If we've got the seventh root of the quotient of X to the third Y and 9, we can write it like this to the se one-seventh power. See? So what happens when we get a to the two-third power if the usual properties of exponents are to hold then that means we've got a to the two-third power means a to the one-third power squared because we're multiplying that numerator times two see it's the same thing as the cube root of a squared or we don't have to write it in parentheses we could just say the cube root of a squared so there's another definition for any rational, for any natural numbers m and k and any non-negative numbers a, a to the m kth means the kth root of a to the m power. Okay? I know this starts to get confusing, but if you look at this, I'm going to show you a trick that's going to make this really easy. So if we've got a to the m kth power, it represents the principal kth root of a to the m power. And we know that the kth root of a to the m power equals the same thing as the kth root of a inside parentheses to the m power. That was from our last video, 7.5a, and that link is in this description. So it follows that if this is what's happening, then if we have a to the m over k, it also represents the kth root of a to the m. All right? So... Take a look at this. We're going to write this without rational exponents. So we've got 27 to the 2 3rd power. We can write it as the third root of 27 squared. The cube root of 27 squared. See? It can be written as like this without the, ex the uh, parentheses. We would just square 27, 27 times 27 is 729, sorry about the focus, and if we cube this, it's 9 cubed, 9 times 9 times 9 is 729, we remove the radical and the root and the exponent, and it's just a 9. We can also cube the 27 and say it's 3 to the third power, it's 3 cubed, and then we can square that 
when we remove the radical sign and that root and that little three exponent because it's a perfect cube, all we're left with is that three and that two exponent. So we've got three squared, which is a nine. See, we can do it either way. Take a look at this one. We have four to the three halves power. So that means it is the square root of four to the third power. Now, what do you notice about these? See how I said we make the denominator the index or the root? So look at this. The denominator in this exponent is a three. That's the root. The denominator in this one is a two. That's the root. Isn't that cool? Makes your life easy, doesn't it? So whatever the denominator is, make that the index. Make that the root, okay? So this would be the square root, and we don't have to write that too, do we? We just know when we see a plain radical sign that it means square. But I wanted to write that so you could see how the denominator was the index, the root. All we have to do is 4 times 4 times 4, which is a 64. And we can square that because we want to find a perfect square because we're dealing with a 2 here. That's 8 times 8. And we can remove the radical sign and that little exponent and say it's 8. We could do it with rational exponents but and removing this radical sign. If we have the cube root of 8 to the 4th power, that's going to be our denominator. That's going to be our numerator. We have 8 to the 4 thirds power. If we've got the 4th root of 7xy to the 5th power, that's our denominator. That's our numerator. And we can write it as 7xy to the 5 fourths power. See? So just remember that index, that root, is the denominator of our rational exponent, okay? The index is the denominator of the rational exponent. Just move him over there. That, that's the numerator, see? So our next video is 7.5c. We're going to talk about negative rational exponents. So when these are negatives, I'm going to add this video to the Algebra 2 playlist so you can study, and there's going to be links to Algebra 1 where we talked about this back last year, okay? 11.5c covers this exact same thing almost. And then all the videos for Chapter 7 that we just did, all those links are going to be in there too, okay? And don't forget I'm on Patreon.com. My dogs and I would really appreciate it if you would become a monthly patron for like just a dollar a month even, okay? or whatever value you think you'd like to support me with. And you can also go to YouTube Fan Funding. And don't forget to like the video if I've helped you, okay? I'll see you next video. Bye.